we are back in Florida. I'm ready. I was in California for a couple weeks. Uh, my Jeep was shipped to Colorado, but luckily I have uh, my good buddy Dan. He let me borrow his YJ. And uh, being Monday, you know what that means. We have ourselves another recovery. And uh, I'm actually out here with Dan. So we're gonna go tag team. We have a stuck Jeep in Ridge Loam. I've never been to Ridge Loam, but from what I've heard, it's wet all year long. So uh, we'll see what we get ourselves into today. found it it's actually uh not that far away from the trailhead at all we we drove not even a half a mile in and it's right here so oh yeah she in there pretty good guess it's been here since what'd you say dan saturday yeah saturday evening so it's been sitting here for two days and then uh he came out here yesterday or the day before and spent the whole day trying to dig it out and with a come along he went and bought bought some equipment and still wasn't able to get it Ooh, that sucks that uh that door is just under the water level so he probably has some water inside that thing all right, while we're waiting, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing rigged up. Dan's got all the Rhino gear. Um, I, I feel like this one will just come out with a, with a single line pull. I imagine it definitely is suctioned in there since it's, it's been in there for a few days already, but uh, he's got a 10,000 pound winch on this thing and single line pull should get it right out. But we will see, you never really know. That's why we brought both Jeeps as backup. I doubt it's gonna take both Jeeps, maybe as an anchor or something, but uh, I don't know, I've seen worse. I feel like a single line pull should get this thing right out. And we're gonna winch it instead of bumping it with the with the rope or something, you know, kinetic rope might work, but slow and steady is always the best bet. Less risk for damage that way. But yeah, let's uh, get it hooked up while we're waiting on them. All right, we got it hooked up. Now we're just gonna wait on the owner to show up and whenever he gets here, we should get this thing right out in five minutes. No biggie, easy peasy. But you know, I'm excited to do a recovery. It's probably been a month since I've done a recovery. So shout out to Dan for coming out, let me use his YJ and bringing out the Gladiator. And uh, we got Jeeps rescuing in a Jeep. It's not very often we get stuck Jeeps. It's usually Toyotas and Dodges, but. Woohoo! Yeah, there's definitely a big hole down here as soon as you get close to it. Oh, hey, look at this. He's got a Rhino USA strap hooked to the front of this thing. <laughs> Too funny. You can tell we were trying to get it out. Look at that. This is our people's. What was he working with? He got a come along, a high lift. Yeah, he had this thing 
is trying to use the high lift as a winch which that'll usually work but <clears throat> they're only uh i think i want i want to say i'm not sure for i'm not exactly sure but i want to say a high lift has like a winching capacity of about four to five thousand pounds so it's not a lot but it's usually enough to make a difference but uh yeah he's got a rhino d-ring shackle oh that sucks something i've been meaning to talk about um don't do this guys because when you loop it through like this and you feed it through and it gets tight with pressure on it you almost never get that knot free it's such a pain or you know at least a d-ring or preferably a soft shackle um getting this thing undone you're gonna have to mess with that for a while and i've seen a lot of them where they just cut the strap to get it off yeah she's in there it sucks because the door is barely under the water line um, being a newer jeep hopefully that the seals are still good in it but more than likely probably has water in the interior well the owner just showed up oh god dang swampy over here too they got a little bridge right here that's cool i've been walking through the puddle problem over here walking through this stuff though you gotta watch out for spider webs me being as tall as i am i always find them never fails and then uh, not only spiders but florida's got some pretty big rattlesnakes i always gotta be careful of those we got we got all types of stuff out here if you look up in the trees i'm sure you'll see some chameleons and stuff Cause like, yeah, because um, we'd never been in here before. We were just trying it out. And uh, we just came in from the southern end. Mm. So when you guys are all oh, at the trailhead, I'm thinking southern end. Right. Because that's where we came in. I didn't know that there was a trail this way. <laughs> yeah, right out 471. <laughs> I, I didn't know. And I'm just sitting there. I'm like, what is this, this guy is talking about? This is Wes. Yeah. Wes, nice, nice to, to meet you, man. Bro. Thank you see, so much for coming I out. I see you got some uh, a rhino strap on that thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, what we do. That was from the guys that were trying to help us out Saturday night. They Good left deal. It here. I, yeah, they sure. left. There's a high lift back there, some rope. Oh, that was but... from me yesterday. Oh, okay. I mean, where I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know that we were this close to a road because mm -hmm. <laughs> we literally drove up to here, turned around, and like, ah, oh, cool, let's get a video of us going through this mud pit. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got stuck. Yeah, that's. It's, it's weird because there's like just some hidden dips in there that, yeah uh, and, and like the rest of it it's like pretty shallow except for mm -hmm. that one section and when we were driving through originally we just powered right through it mm -hmm. no issues nothing that's usually how it happens and you turn around and hit it again and bury it <laughs> yeah yeah that's exactly what happened and you know it's i just got the, i got the thing out of the shop friday funny <laughs> brand new lift kit and all that i just got it out friday nice and um well that's a good way to break it in you know yeah 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 and my friend everyone kept telling me oh you got the cherry pop finally yeah. <laughs> get it get it stuck it happens to everybody trust yep. me yeah yeah that's how you learn uh yeah exactly and you uh have your keys for it right yes sir okay good this time yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> she... like i said all i know is a southern entrance mm -hmm. it's a 30 minute hike i've never been here but i always hear it's wet all year long that it gets real swampy but uh this yeah. is my, my first time in this area okay um yeah it's it's a cool trail i mean from what i know yeah it's real real scenic out here oh it looks it's nice. beautiful nice hike <laughs> you know yeah. when when you're not lugging recovery we stopped gear. down yeah. the end there and i said well, let's go take see what we're getting into you know wait for you know that and all of a sudden there's a jeep i'm thinking that ain't no 30 minute walk. <laughs> and, uh, oh, from that <laughs> way. Yeah. yeah, if you're going from that way. If yeah. you're going from that way, it's a 30 minute walk. Um, We're all hooked up, ready okay. to go, man. Just jump so in what it. Do I need to do? Um, just put it in four low and reverse and okay. uh, just a little tiny bit of gas. You definitely don't want to spin the tires. Yeah, because it'll make it. Yeah, bigger. just. Now, uh, the issue that I've been having with it yesterday when I was trying to get going, like I was telling you on the phone, is when I was trying to start it up again, it wasn't starting. Okay. okay. We'll see what we got. Okay. Not when pull it out. Is it out of gas by chance? Or? No, it's got gas. I got a okay. quarter tank. I wonder why it wouldn't be starting. That's not never water. a good sign. Unless you were, yeah, unless you were blasting through and having water splash everywhere, you might have got that. some water into the intake. That's yeah. always a, a no bueno. Yeah. You it know. will start the first time. Uh-huh. 
Just put it in neutral and pull yeah. it out of there and we can check that air box. Okay. Yeah, future reference, never never blast through the puddles. Slow and steady is way better. Once you get water into that intake, you're done. All right. Even with this thing, with a snorkel, I had a little bit of water in my air box. Yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah, he's got my favorite type of snorkel, the the rugged. But, uh, but yeah. You know how going. many Chiefs I've seen that don't have these? Yeah, the winches. I'm just looking and the... at I'm like, you got all this equipment. You got front, you got lights and all this other stuff. But you don't have any, but you don't have a winch. Well, it's a high dollar purchase. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I was looking at getting a 12,000 pound one. And, um, it's oh, mandatory for this type of stuff, you know. Yeah. If you're doing off-roading and recoveries, you got to have a winch. That's the best piece of recovery gear. But uh, see if it'll start. If it doesn't start, then we'll just put it in neutral. Right. Either which way, it's coming out. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's water all up inside, huh? Yeah. Open the door, and there's no difference. That water runs right into it. That sucks. Uh, no, it didn't start. Well, it started. Let's try it again. It's trying. It like it. It wants to, but something's yeah. holding it back. So let's uh, let's go ahead and just put it in neutral. Make sure parking brake is off, and um, give her a little bit of. The power. I'm standing off to the side. No camera angle makes it look a little bit closer than I am, but you're good. She's moving. Are you getting dragged in? Huh? You're not getting dragged in, are you? Yeah. You are? Try try and give it another five feet or so. It, it is moving. Foot off the brake. Off the brake. There you go. Just keep your yeah, no, no brakes. <laughs> well, I'm, thinking, I'm trying to get it in a neutral, but it won't go in a neutral. Oh, no? Okay. Um, no. So, try try and turn your key to the own position and see if she'll go into neutral that way. And then I think there's like a safety latch under your gear shifter. I'm not as familiar with the newer Jeeps, but uh, I think there's like an override latch specifically for this reason when she's not when they're not starting up you got to be able to manually engage neutral did you figure it out um now let me see let me get over here real quick You want to be closer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's she deep in here. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Oh, that's, that's no fun. Oh, and there's a big old. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Yeah, so that's one of those in there. pieces we were trying to wedge under there. So I think inside of here somewhere. Where is it at? Right here. If you want to pop that little lever open okay i think there's like a pull handle or something in there that you can like manually uh, uh it basically dis this? yeah I, I believe so i believe that disengages the the shifter i could be wrong but that's what i've heard is there something in there to pull on or push i mean i'm looking i don't see yeah these newer vehicles are are so smart it won't even let you put it in neutral huh that's that's tough. It's like I can feel the... I feel like there was something to pull on in there. I mean, there's the, the thing that goes to the light, but that's it. Is there another little um, lever I'm like looking. that anywhere? What's under the emergency brake right there? Does that the little thing pop up or anything yeah, in there? It's, just, it's nothing. There's got to be a way to disengage it. Um, maybe try putting the transfer case in neutral and see. It won't let you do anything, huh? No. Hmm. Try and yeah, put it in neutral while you're. 
Oh, there it goes. You had it. There All right, go. I'm in neutral. All right, a little bit of starting. I think we're good to go. Go ahead and try. Let me get on this side. All right, he breaks off, everything's off. Good deal. Is this your half door? Yeah, we tried to use that as a, <laughs> as a ramp. <laughs> as a ramp. You should be good. Dan's getting dragged in. She's moving. Uh, she's moving. I think. I think you might be all right. Think so? Once once it breaks free, if it the more that pushes up in front, you should be good. Yeah, she's going. Yeah, even if it's dragging the other Jeep in, if it drags it in for three or four feet or maybe five feet, it'll push up all that dirt in the front of it and it just gets harder to, to drag in. I mean, not always does that work, but in this situation, it works fine. He's not that stuck. Luckily, the, the suction isn't that big of a deal. And you can see Dan is winching in 10 seconds, giving it a break for 10 seconds. Now, you could probably get away with 20 or 30 seconds winching, but... There's no reason to overheat the winch. I'm just letting it cool. It's weird, it didn't sound like the motor was hydro locked. If it is hydro locked, then it, you know, it wouldn't want to turn over at all. It would just kind of um, give you a lot of resistance. But it, it started for a second and then it died and then it started for a second. So we'll see when we get it out. Um, yeah, I feel like at this point we could probably just drag it out with the, with the kinetic rope and the toe strap would be quicker than winching. It's not suctioned in at all. So if you want to, um, let some slack off, turn it around and we'll just hook up the kinetic rope. That'll be a lot faster. The mud suction is free, so we should be good to go. Go ahead, hit the brakes. That works. Look at that. <laughs> Pull those drain plugs out when you get out. My pretty new Jeep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's the way to do it. First week I had my Jeep, I went wheeling out by the Rubicon, or um, I think it's actually called Signal Peak, Northern California, and I crawled up on a rock on one side. When the front passenger tire fell off of that rock, it destroyed my whole rocker panel. Those cheap plastic ones, it just disintegrated it. I thought I caved in the whole passenger side of my Jeep. Let me, uh, we're gonna disconnect the strap real quick, Look at this winch line. No, it's right there. Give me some more slack. There we go. Do I need to do anything? If you want to disconnect that one, it'll be great. I think you're good. All right. Thank you, sir. And grab this winch blanket off. Uh, if you guys don't have these, you definitely need it if you're doing winching. That keeps the weight down, so that way, in case anything does break, the line will fall to the ground instead of go flying. All right, we're gonna get this thing winch, uh, winch lines pulled back in. Turn the Jeep around, just hook up toe strap and a kinetic rope and it'll be able to pull it right out way faster than, than winching. We winch just to break mud suction. That's the main thing, because uh, you never really know. If it's suctioned in place, then, then the yanking is, is not gonna be your best bet. See where it was dragging them in a little bit. Yeah. All right. Um, should be good from there. Let's try it. Use the kinetic rope, and we already have a 20 foot strap out, and then we're gonna hook up. The, uh, we need one more toe strap. So I'll grab that, grab that 40 or another 20. Another 20 would be yeah, great if you have it or a 30 or whatever, but all I got is tree saver. Tree saver. That actually, um, let's see, let's see how much. 
how much space we have here. You never really know. I mean, you could always back into it a little bit if you need to. All right, this is the beauty of the soft shackles when you're connecting multiple straps together. What you don't want to do is use a D-ring on a kinetic rope because, I don't know, I say that every time, this kinetic rope is going to stretch. If you're using a D-ring in the middle and, you know, it's highly unlikely, but if that strap or something on this end were to let loose, you have a D-ring right here, this thing is going to go flying and it's going to go flying back at the recovering vehicle. So let's find the end of this strap. Oop, oop, drop it into the hole. <laughs> it gets deep. Let's see, it should be somewhere over here. And hopefully I grab a toe strap and not a snapping turtle or something. Well, you can't find it. I'm sifting around over here. I do not feel it. Where's my strap? Dang, it's gone. Oh well, I'll go to this end. Still can't find him five feet away from the end of it. What the heck? Where did that thing go? There it is. No, way over there. That's what. One connection. There we go. Right here. I think you could back into it a little bit. You'll be all right. Couple more feet. Good right there. All right, one more soft shackle. So what do we have here? 30 feet, 20 foot um, rope, 20 foot strap. So uh, we have 70 feet. Doesn't look like it. One more soft shackle right here. And then this is how I like to do it on the back end. This is what I recommend to everybody. Um, you definitely can hook, you know, the toe strap straight to the D-ring, but again, this is where soft shackles come in handy. I like to tighten down my D-ring with a wrench. That way it's not gonna rattle off. You don't have to worry about somebody just walking up to it and undoing it. And then I just use soft shackles to connect everything. And the beauty of a soft shackle, it floats. Can't beat it. Just under 30 bucks on our website. This thing's rated for 46,250 pounds. And just like everything else Rhino USA makes, it has a lifetime warranty on it. Can't beat it for the price. They're a little tight when they're brand new, but once you give it a good pull or two, they'll break in, loosen up a little bit. All right, sir, we are good to go. You still got stuff over there? Um, yeah, I got one, just the last little bits. Okay, no problem. Go ahead, grab it. Make sure our connections are good. Everything's tight. It's always best to give this thing a solid pull. All right, we're uh, we're good to go. This thing should come right out. It's nice and easy for a low. Another, another recommendation, um, if you are the recovering vehicle, put that thing in four low. You know, not unless you got a big V8 or diesel or something that just has, you know, tons of power. You're, you always wanna be in four low when you're pulling out a vehicle or doing a recovery like this. Four high just doesn't have the torque to spin the wheels like you need to. There's no point in straining your transfer case and your transmission. Um, that's exactly what 4Low is meant for. Better gearing, more torque, easier, lower RPMs. Or actually, it might be higher RPMs if you're going faster, but in this situation, 4Low is what we want. We always tell people, keep it straight. It's hard, you know, when you're going in reverse, you kind of you kind of get fish telling. I'm going to take the tension off that back. Yeah. Up a bit. Well, I think you'll, you'll, you should be able to just easily pull this thing out without even having to bump it. I saw a shirt the other day um, in a different recovery group. It said, keep the wheel straight and don't run over the rope. <laughs> so that's a pretty good shirt. Yes, sir. Nice and easy. You're in neutral, right? You break off. There she goes. Oh, 
it's not as easy as it looks, huh? Yeah, a little, little harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure you just pull it right out. Oh, what the heck? Is it down in a hole? Tell me that should not have happened. Are you sure that e-brake's off? Yeah, it's off. It's still a neutral? Yeah. Wow. All right, Dan. We may have messed up. It should have came right out as easy as it looked. That's my mistake, you know. Uh, one more time. No, she not she not going. Well, that sucks. It must be hung up on something because it, it was moving fairly easy while we were winching it. Time. No, the winch was working, but that sucks, dude, because it, it was moving so easy under the winch that I thought for sure that it'd, it'd be no problem pulling it out, but you never know. It might be hung up on something under there. It might just be in that in that hole fighting the lip trying to get back out. That would that would be my mistake. Oh, I got a big-ass horse fly on me trying to get me. Get out of here. Well, damn, that just cost us a little bit of time, but not a big deal. We can hook back up the winch and, and get it back out. Or we could just hook up my your, the other Jeep right in front and both pull it. That, that might actually be a little bit quicker. You want to try that before we do it? Because once once we get it out, we're still going to have to keep, keep pulling it because it's not running. And winching is just going to take forever. But uh, maybe we'll just hook up the yj in front of yours and both just easily try and pull it if it doesn't come out easily that way then we'll go back to the winch i'm just trying to think what would be quicker but uh the way it moved dude i thought for sure you would just be it's, able to pull it right stuck out in a hole. yeah yeah usually once you break that initial suction then you can pull it out super easy but uh you're definitely stuff this something something's in there holding it up but let me i'll grab the yj and we'll just hook up another strap real quick and we don't want to be too hard on it there's no point in going full ham and just yanking the crap out of it i don't like doing that but uh if both vehicles can easily pull it out then we should be good let's see that was my mistake that was my mistake i thought for sure it would come right out but you know recovery easy even though i've done the same thing hundreds of times they're all a little bit different you never really know what's under that water level so yeah yeah see if we get it towed at least we'll get it back out to the main road that way worst case scenario uh tow truck can come and get it yeah uh, but we're gonna try and bump this super easy same setup nothing too hard if this does not work then we'll just go right back to winching so try to set up the camera down here but we are ready sucks out I don't have a camera guy out here, so I'm gonna do the best I can. It's always difficult to try and get all the vehicles in one shot. But uh, I think on this one, I don't know, which one do you guys wanna see? Do you wanna see the recovering vehicles or the stuck vehicle? I think I'm gonna go with the recovering vehicles just so we can see how difficult it is and if it actually works. So let me set the camera up right over here. We'll see what happens, guys. Wish us luck. All right. You're good. Thumbs up. winching that sucks it's not often it happens like that but you guys saw it i mean both vehicles pulling and it didn't move yeah, original winching it moved about five six feet so i would have bet money we were good to go oh i'm sorry dude i should have backed up a little more for you yeah he's digging down and then i was digging down so everybody out there that says oh just hit it with a kinetic rope just bump it with a kinetic rope that goes to show you you know what i tell people if your truck is actually big enough 
to yank it out, it's also big enough to break that rope or break the toe point. So yanking is not always the best option. That's why we always start with winching, but. You can see two, two Jeeps here, four low, just digging, digging, so. But uh, yeah, my mistake, we'll, we'll switch it back out and hook up the winch line again and she'll come that way. You guys ever try and do a shortcut that ends up, you know, you try and save yourself some time and it just costs yourself more time, but live and learn. We're not perfect. We make mistakes, but the main thing for me is just damage. That's, that's what the mistake that I don't want to make is causing damage to a vehicle. So we definitely try and uh, be cautious on that end. But, you know, I've been in this situation more than enough times to where usually the vehicle, once you get unstuck from mud, from the mud suction, it'll come right out. But it also is dead weight. It doesn't have any power to assist, so that makes a huge difference. But we're set up for another pull. But in the meantime, I want to pop this hood, check this air filter in this thing, and see if it's clogged or wet. Um, that could be the reason that it is not starting. So we'll pop that air filter out real quick. And check and see. Oh, there's big holes in there. That's where you were stuck, right there. Oh, oh dang. dang, oh dang. Oh my God, yep, yep, yep. I went down, guys. <laughs> that's right. probably, is, uh... that's like four feet deep right there. Whew. Hard ground right here. And then you take one step that way and well, look how high it came up. See, when I change the air filter in here, I didn't do it, so now all I see are screws in here. Uh, it shouldn't just be. Oh, you do have screws. What the heck? <sighs> yeah, most of the time it's just latches. Yeah, it's so stupid. All right, we need to. And then you got a Phillips on that one. Flathead. No, Phillips will do that. Yeah, all right. Let's. Uh... Dan, you have a Phillips screwdriver with you? If I had my Jeep. I would have all my tools, but I do not have my Jeep with me. Let's go check, see if we got a Phillips. About my first thought would be that. Yeah, you got it too. <laughs> it got me too, man. I, I imagine. I didn't bring my. I should have grabbed my dive boots. <laughs> Crocs are where it's at. You can never. You can never go wrong with the Crocs. Oh, I'm not saying. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that. But... <laughs> and that way, if if you lose it in the hole, it just floats to the top again. Yeah. All right, let's see if we got a Phillips head screwdriver. Dude, these big old deer flies out here tearing me up, man. One just got me in my leg and it instantly bleeding. All right, almost there. I feel bad now. Probably cost us an extra 15, 20 minutes trying to pull it instead of just continuing to winch it, but it is what it is live and learn so next time i feel like maybe what i'll take from this maybe you guys take from this learn from my mistakes is that if the vehicle is not running just winch it if the vehicle is running then once you get it free then sure you can pull it out with a rope but if it's dead weight then i'd probably suggest just continuing to winch it right yeah getting around it is the is the tough part if we were to just if we were to came in from that side you'd probably be able to pull yeah, it out super yeah, easy yeah. but Half the time it is, or most of the time, is better to pull it out the same way it came in just to oh, really? ensure. Because you, you never know what's in front of it unless, you know, I mean, we were walking around in there, so it's not too bad besides some big holes. But most of the time we do opt just to, to pull it pull it out the way it came in. Gotcha. In your situation, you were so close to making it, it probably would have been better just to pull it from the front. But this is the way we chose. Oh, we can hook it right to that. All right, I'll grab that screwdriver real quick and let's let's pop that air filter. We got the Rhino Rhino USA tool roll coming in handy. All right, we've got some two different sizes. Let's let's go back here one more time. I mean, the, besides there being you know deep holes, it, it really does not look stuck. Like I feel like if it was under its own power right now, it would be able to drive out of it, but. You never know. Recoveries can be tricky. That's why I like doing it. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she deep. 
Oh, yeah. You definitely got water in the intake. All right. That's why you won't start. Yeah, but you do have a K&N filter. It's, it's not it's not waterlogged or clogged, but... I've, I've got some uh, K&N cleaner with me. It's, the, the filter itself is clean. Um, it's wet, but look, you could try it without it. All right. Might be it wasn't getting any air. That's what I was thinking, but there's there's definitely water sitting in the bottom of that box. And if it doesn't start this time, then we'll, we're just gonna pull it out. But uh, all right, you can go ahead and, and try. And I left my freaking cigarettes in the other truck. <laughs> Alright, here we go. There she goes. Oh, don't. Yeah, I just. Alright, well, she started up, guys. Sounds a little better. It's gonna smoke for a little bit. Probably burn off any little bit of water. All right, well, go ahead and slap this in there. And, and then oh. back in there or just keep it? At oh, yeah, I was going to say I'll give it a little bit. No, I'll uh, put it in the Jeep. Yeah. Okay. Try and start it back up a little bit. Don't don't floor it, but give it just a little bit of gas. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it starts knocking or anything, then immediately shut it off. No. Ugh, it's, it's a tough call, dude. Like, it wants to start, but at the same time, we probably just need to pull the plugs, but... Um... I don't like the way it sounds. If it'll stay running, let it run, but it... It sounded like it's ticking a little bit, so we'll... Let's get it out of here and then check the oil, see if you got water in the oil and stuff. And uh, if, if, the, if the oil is looking milky, then you just you got to tow it home. Okay. If there's no water in the oil, then you, you should be all right. All right. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and put it in uh, four low, four wheel drive, reverse. See if see if she'll back out a little bit. Are you ready, Dan? Yeah, I said turn turn driver just a little bit. See if see if she'll back out under her own power. Give it a little bit of winch. Give it just a little bit more gas. There she goes, boys. All right, now there's another big hole. Yeah, keep going. All right, winch. Hold on, hold on. Give it a little winch 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 here it goes it's getting ready all right turn your wheel driver just a little right there yep yeah having the vehicle moving under its own power just makes a huge difference far less uh strenuous on the, on the recovering vehicle there we go again and now that back uh, passenger in is in that big hole back there. You can see it's kind of flexed out. Turn your wheel uh, back this way. Yeah. Um, I feel like he can just back out from here. So let me let me grab the winch rope or the line, and let's see if you can just keep backing out. It doesn't sound horrible, but it, it doesn't sound good either. It sounds like it's got a little bit of a lifter tick. All right, buddy, keep backing out.
There we go, guys. That was it. Alrighty, alrighty. Nice and easy. Yeah, if it was running when we were bumping on it, uh, I feel like we'd have been way better off. Keep coming, keep coming. All right, you're solid right there. Hold up, hold up. Oh, uh, uh, pull up a little. Oh, never mind. You're good. You're good. You're good. All right, that marker. Yep. Don't shut it off. All right. Or actually, yeah. Go ahead and shut it off, and let's check the oil. Here's your bolts, your screws. Keep right. those. Put them in the console that or cup holder. Look like a cheap part. No, that's definitely not. <laughs> She's got a little bit of a tick to her, but it's not hydro locked. But let's let's check and see if there's if there's water in the oil. Or is that trans? This oil or transmission? Should be oil. Um, I'll let you, yeah, I'll let you. Oh yeah. Damn it. All right. All right. Well. We got to tow it from here and then uh yeah you guys see that's super milky so there's water in there um we're gonna have to tow it and then just do a bunch of flushes on it um just out of curiosity could i flush it out here in the field or is that something that has to be done in the shop i mean you, you definitely could but it, it's probably going to take you know a few times of doing it um i would take it in just okay. to play it safe but i mean you definitely can Good thing I got a good healthy account with Firestone. Yeah, it'll probably take three or four. And pulled the drain plugs. Yeah. yeah now she's she drained it out everywhere. That's a good thing about Jeeps. They have holes in the floor, um, holes under the seat, back seat, and in the trunk area. So if you ever get water inside of it, you just pull out all those plugs and it'll drain right out underneath. About having to clean this thing up after the yeah. All right, so we got it hooked up. We're going to drag it back out to the main road. That way um, it'll be easier accessible or, you know, tow truck can come and get it because tow trucks do not go down roads like this usually. Um, they, they will not go into off-road stuff because that big old tow truck will get stuck very easily. Um, so when towing, you always, if you're, if you're hooking up connections like this, you want your tow strap in this vehicle because half the time this strap gets ran over. You would much rather have this strap get ran over than your nice, you know, $100, $150 kinetic rope. Um, and then also what I like to do is pull it all the way out to the right like this. That way as it's getting tight, you can see in the mirror, the slacks start to get tight and you know where the end of the rope is. Um, nice and easy though, we're gonna drag this thing back out to the road so it doesn't have to run anymore. And uh, you know, less damage, the better. Yeah, you're you're good. You're good. Uh, well, no, he's coming. Oh, he's, he, he's pulled off. Okay, we're good. We're good. Four low. Yep. You're four low. No, he's not neutral. Are you in neutral or e brake off? off? Yeah, go again. Why is it? What is going on? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, hold on. He should be, uh, you back in neutral? Yeah. Okay, foot off the brake. All right, try it again. I will get you to back up real quick so we can get this thing out. Um, no, it is definitely not in gear. I don't know what is going on. That's why we couldn't pull it out before. It is for some reason, those back wheels are locked up. Hey, uh, put your transfer case in neutral. That might be the reason if the transfer case was engaged to four wheel drive. All right, um, everything's in neutral now. Let's try one more time. He's good. I think the transfer case being in four low was probably hanging it up. Yeah. Probably what, probably what 
why we couldn't get it out before. There she is. Yep. All right, go ahead and cut hard driver so we can clear this YJ. More driver, more driver. That's it. All right, you're good. That's why we couldn't get it out earlier as the transfer case wasn't in neutral probably. Yeah. Learn something new. Uh, you know, my Jeeps, all these are manual, so you, but usually I would think if the vehicle itself is in neutral, then the transfer case wouldn't matter, but oh well, we got it. All right, we are done. Successful recovery mission, like always. It does suck that, you know, he got a, he got a little bit of damage. Um, water in the oil is never good. You definitely don't want that to happen, but uh, he's in a position now to where he said he's going to go run down to the store, grab a couple gallons of oil, do, you know, three or four oil changes on it, flush it out, and uh, hopefully that'll be good enough to get him back home to where he can get it into a shop and get it uh, looked at a little bit more if needed. Years ago, I did the same thing to my Ford Ranger, buried it in a puddle. I'll post the picture. It was epic. I sucked in a ton of water that day, and uh, my oil looked far worse than his. It was like straight white milk coming out of it, and uh, you know I had to do the same thing. I did about three, four oil changes on it. But yeah, it's not the end of the world, but it is definitely not fun. Uh, it didn't go as smoothly as I would originally liked. That uh, transfer case not being in neutral definitely stumped us. Um, you know, originally we couldn't even get the dang thing into neutral. So, but when we were winching it out, it was rolling just fine. So it was not engaged. It was in neutral. Everything was going smooth when we were winching. And then when we stopped to connect the kinetic ropes, all we did was uh, just put, engage the handbrake. So there's no reason it should have went back into park or engaged the transfer case. So something weird happened there. Um, and that's ultimately what stopped us from being able just to pull it out with the kinetics. Um, after the fact, I started thinking about that on the way home. I was like, that, that doesn't make sense. I wonder how that happened. I've never had that happen in the past. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Live and learn. This video, we're going to give away a medium duty set of ratchets. Your choice color. We have blue, green, red, gray, a couple different colors to choose from. Um, but like always, if you want any of the equipment that you see me use, go to rhinousainc.com. We get a 10% discount with the code 4x4Rescue. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Smash that like button for me and I will see you guys next Monday.